While exploring for some fresh inspiration, I came across this incredible website that just won award site of the day last Sunday on 26th. If you are someone who keeps an eye on award winning websites, you might have seen this one too. It features some really well executed animations that caught my attention right away and those who follow this channel, you probably saw this coming. A video dedicated to breaking down and recreating this scroll animation. It's a design trend worth exploring because scroll animations like this have become increasingly popular especially on award winning websites. So I was eager to dive in and walk you through my approach to recreate this exact animation. It might look tricky at first, but it's much simpler than it seems. In just a couple of hours, I was able to recreate a very similar version of this animation using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and of course, GSAP and scroll trigger. And if you are working in React or Next.js, we have already covered how to use GSAP and scroll trigger in a previous video. So be sure to check that out, it's very straightforward. One more thing. As always, I am committed to staying ahead of the latest trends and showing you how to create these immersive experiences from scratch. So if you find my work helpful, I would really appreciate if you leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Alright, let's dive straight into the video. We'll keep the HTML as simple as possible. First, we need three main sections. A hero section, a section for our cards and an outro section. The hero section will include an h1 element with some placeholder text. Similarly, the outro section will also have an h1 element with its own placeholder text. In the sticky card section, we'll create our cards. Each card will have two parts, a card image and card content. For the image, we'll use an image tag and set its source to an image from the assets folder. The card content will be a paragraph element with some placeholder text. We'll then duplicate this structure 5 more times, creating a total of 6 cards, just like the original design. For each card, we'll update the image source and text to make them unique. That's all we need for the HTML. It's very basic and doesn't require anything more. Now let's move on to the styling part. We'll begin by resetting the default styles using the universal selector. This means setting margin and padding to zero and box sizing to border box, which ensures consistent spacing and sizing across all elements. For the body, I'll set the font to New Montreal to give the overall design a modern and clean appearance. Images will take up the full width and height of their container, and object fit cover ensures that they scale proportionally without distortion. Each section will span the full width and height of the viewport. I am using position relative to allow child elements to position themselves inside. An overflow hidden will prevent the cards from creating a draggable page when they move outside the viewport during the animation. In the hero and outro sections, we will center all the content both horizontally and vertically using flexbox. These sections will have a dark background color and white text. The H1 elements in these sections will use a decent font size, font weight and some line height. For the sticky guard section, I'll give it a light grey background to distinguish it from the other sections. Inside this section, we'll position each card absolutely in the center of the viewport temporarily using the transform technique. I'll also add will change transform to optimize animations and improve performance. This ensures the cards remain perfectly centered no matter the viewport size. Each card will have a flex box layout with its content divided into two parts, the card image and the card content. The card will be styled with flex direction column and some gap to create a clean spacing between the elements. For the card image, we'll use flex value 110 to make it responsive and ensure it scales proportionally within its container. The card content will have a fixed height of 12 pixels and will be vertically centered. The paragraph text inside the card content will use a different font, be styled in uppercase and have a font size of 12 pixels. Finally, we'll add a media query for screens with a width of 900 pixels or less. In this case, I'll adjust the card width to 75% making the layout mobile friendly. This approach ensures that the design is functional, visually appealing and responsive across all devices. Now let's move on to the next step, animating the cards on scroll. 
We start by waiting for the DOM to fully load using the DOM content loaded event. This ensures that all HTML elements are ready before we execute our animation logic. Next, we initialize a new instance of Lenis, a smooth scrolling library to make our scrolling experience more fluid. Lenis works together with GSAP scroll trigger, ensuring all animations sync perfectly with the smooth scrolling effect. This setup allows the scroll triggered animations to feel natural and responsive. The integration process is straightforward and you can find this block of code directly on the Lenis documentation website. Next, we prepare the cards for animation by selecting them using GSAP's two array method. This method converts all elements with the class card into an array, making it easy to loop through and apply transformations. Then we define an array of rotation values to give each card a slight random rotation. This is because in the original website animation, you can see that the cards are already rotated when they come into view. By setting these rotations in advance, we ensure our animation closely matches the original website. Now we use the for each method to loop through each card. For every card, we set its initial position and rotation using GSAP set method. First, we apply a static rotation from the rotations array, assigning a unique angle to each card based on its index in the loop. We also move the card just below the viewport by setting its Y position to the height of the window. This hides the cards initially so they only appear as a part of the scroll triggered animation. Next, we use scroll trigger to control how the animation responds to scrolling. The sticky card section is set as the trigger with the animation starting when its top aligns with the top of the viewport. The animation spans a distance 8 times the height of the viewport, giving enough room for all the cards to animate fully. Here we pin the sticky card section to keep it fixed in place during the animation. This ensures that the cards have enough time and space to complete their transitions without being interrupted by the rest of the page scrolling. By pinning this section, we create a focused area where the animation can play out smoothly. The pin spacing is set to true, which ensures that the rest of the content flows properly around this pinned section. Finally, we set scrub to 1 to link the animation's progress to the scroll position, making the animation feel natural and responsive. Now, the onUpdate function is the core of the card animation logic. It runs every time the scroll position updates allowing us to dynamically calculate the position of each card based on the progress of the scroll. Here, we begin by retrieving the scroll progress using self.progress. This value ranges from 0 to 1, representing how far along the animation is, where 0 means the start and 1 means the end. This progress is crucial because it determines the position of each card during the scroll. Next, we will calculate the total number of cards using cards.length and divide the scroll timeline equally among them. To do this, we find the progress allocated to each card by dividing 1 by the total number of cards. This ensures every card gets an equal share of the scroll animation. For example, if there are 6 cards, each card will use 1 sixth of the scroll's total progress. As we loop through each card using for each, we'll calculate the starting point of its animation. The starting point depends on the card's position in the sequence, with the first card starting at 0 and each subsequent card starting later based on the progress allocated per card. This ensures the cards animate one after another in a smooth sequence. We'll then calculate how far along each card's animation has progressed. To do this, we subtract the card's start point from the overall progress and divide the result by the progress allocated to that card. We'll also ensure this progress is clamped between 0 and 1, so no card starts too early or continues animating after its timeline has ended. Once we have the progress, we'll calculate the vertical position of that card. At the beginning of its animation, the card will be positioned just below the viewport. As its progress increases, the card will gradually move upward, creating the effect of sliding into the view. This is done by multiplying the window's height by the remaining progress, ensuring a smooth transition. Next, we handle the behavior of the cards once they are fully visible and the scroll progress is further. To do this, we check if the card progress is equal to 1, meaning the card's main animation is complete and whether it's not the last card in the sequence. If both conditions are true, we calculate how much additional progress has been made beyond the card's allocated timeline. We'll calculate this extra progress using remaining progress, which measures how far the scroll has advanced beyond the point where the current card is fully visible. 
If remaining progress is greater than zero, it means the card is ready to shift slightly out of its original position to make space for the next card. To determine how much the card should shift, we use a distance multiplier. This multiplier gradually decreases as we move down the card sequence, ensuring that cards later in this stack move less dramatically than the earlier ones. Using this multiplier, we calculate the horizontal and vertical offsets. These offsets push the card slightly to the side and upward, creating a layered effect as the new cards move into focus. The horizontal position is shifted left by percentage of the window width, scaled by the distance multiplier and remaining progress. Similarly, the vertical position is shifted upward by percentage of the window height, also scaled by the same factors. These calculations ensure that the movement is smooth and proportional to the scroll progress. Finally, we use GSAP's two method to animate the card to its calculated positions, X position and Y position. The duration is set to zero to make the movement instant, ensuring it stays perfectly in sync with the scroll. The easing is set to none, maintaining a linear and fluid motion. Mm, looks like I made a little typo somewhere. Let me take a closer look. Here it is. Actually, we referencing card start here. There we go. That was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.